let me um, dive a little bit deeper. Why did the National Unity Platform choose to go to the European uh, Union instead of maybe appealing to the African Union? I'll tell you this. First of all, you should ask why did we, why, why would we even go outside Uganda when we have courts here in Uganda? <laughs> but you know, Owinidoro, you saw how the judiciary here behaved on the presidential election petition that we brought. They cleared the show that they are in the pockets of General Museveni. The East African community and the African Union has largely become a club of presidents looking out for each other and uh, putting diplomacy ahead of justice and ahead of everything. But most importantly, we know that Museveni has largely been a puppet of the West. You see the Baganda say, Nkumanyi Muse, ya Girako. Now Museveni calls us puppet of the West, but he has been the puppet of the West, just endorsing everything that comes. We know where Museveni's money comes from. We know where Museveni's energy comes from, and that is where exactly we go. So we went to the EU and told them, you people have historically been empowering dictators. You know, I mean, would have fallen long time if the international community got their hands off him. Mm -hmm. Gaddafi, Mugabe, ETC, all dictators would have fallen long enough before, I mean, if the international community got their hands off them. So we went to them and told them, we know that if you stop sponsoring our operation back home, at least that will be the first step to our liberation. And they listened to us, at least so far. But then again, the repercussion of that from other people's views is that we are reintroducing colonialism at the end of the day, which then kills the independence what that we're continuously uh, following through. But by, by telling the, the, the foreigners not to sponsor our op op oppression, that is colonialism, by telling them stop uh, sponsoring a dictator here, I don't think it is. I'll tell you that all these dictators always pull out that uh, Pan-African card. I saw Tayeba with his sheep hair on the head, that colonial wig that they put. They don't even know what it means. They keep sweating, but they want to look white, and they call out on colonialism. What do you call colonialism? I think colonialism is subjecting your people mm -hmm. to a foreign power. Mm -hmm. You see, we almost no longer have an airport. Our country is being mortgaged to the whites. Today, if you have a child, that child owes the, 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 the foreigners 1.8 million. Every Ugandan, even one that was born today, you owe foreigners 1.8 million. I don't know how much it's going to be next year. All that money is being borrowed by Museveni and his team, robbing it, but it is us that have to pay it. Okay. So they are literally sending us back to colonialism. They are talking about colonialism. They are selling our children to slaves, to slavery. Today, slave trade is happening today. And those people in power are the ones owning those companies that sell our daughters there. Every day, we, we, they repatriate uh, an average of three dead bodies killed in the Middle East. And they talk about colonialism. They have the guts to talk about colonialism. They have reintroduced slavery today. They run companies that, uh, you know, sell organs. Mm -hmm. They sell your kidney while you're still alive. And they call out colonialism. They should be ashamed of themselves. Okay. All right. You talked about natural resources. Uh, the reality and of the matter Let me, let me that... also, I'm sorry to interject, mm -hmm. but I'll tell you this without any doubt, that actually we are now being recolonized by people in a black skin. Okay? Museven himself is a colonialist. He's a colonialist, he's, at least according to President Obote, Museveni is not a Ugandan. His father was not born in Uganda, Museveni was not born in Uganda, his son was not born in Uganda, and his grandchildren are not born in Uganda. Colonialism is a state where a foreigner is ruling over you, and Museveni is a colonialist of this modern day. So, who is talking about colonialism? I'm a Ugandan, I'm an indigenous Ugandan talking about Uganda and fighting for what is rightfully ours. We don't want our natural wealth to go into the hands of a foreigner, that is Museveni. No wonder he does not care our, about our health care system. No wonder he does not care about our education. No wonder he does not care about the future of Uganda. Because he's not a Ugandan anyway. He's a colonialist in mm -hmm. 2022. All right.
You have talked about the natural wealth that we have. The reality of the matter is that we have oil. Oh, yeah. And it's it's a resource yes. that can enable us as Uganda to break free from yes. the chains of colonialism. How then do we revert and use, arrest this natural resource no, to then defend us and give us the liberty to be as independent and then bring the wealth back to us to, so that we can thrive as a nation? Thank you. We, the Christians, are told that God will test you with a little to see how you will behave when they give you the bigger chunk. Mm -hmm. Look at what is happening with our gold, you know. Mm -hmm. It is closed out by one family. If it's not Museveni, it's his son. If it's not his son, it's his brother, Sodo. They own the gold mines in the country, you know. Mm -hmm. That's exactly what's happening to oil. And he has been honest. The guy has told you that it is my oil, it is his oil. How we, can we make sure that we maximize the natural resources mm -hmm of Uganda to benefit Ugandans by ensuring that these resources are, you know, run by institutions, not an individual, but institutions. There's no institutionalism here in Uganda. It's an individual that's ruling over us. That is why you were seeing uh, in the Kosase probe, the, 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 the people that run the uh, Uganda Airlines are telling you that they get instructions from Salim Saleh, Museveni's brother. So everything is owned by one family, okay? The only way we can benefit from our natural resources is to ensure that these natural resources are actually benefiting the people of Uganda. Do you know the details of the oils agreements that I made? So if you were oh. president, how would you when make that happen? When you are president, how will you make that happen? I would make sure all these are run by institutions and make sure there's clarity, there's transparency. It's not one person or one family that runs the wealth of the nation. I gave you an example of gold. What these people are doing with the gold from Karamoja is exactly what they intend to do with the oil from Bunyuru. That is how they are dealing with the land. Look at them, they are owning land in miles, in a region where they are not born. Where did they go get those miles of land? Okay, now the way, the same way they, they've been running the oil is the same way they, they are intending, I mean, they, they've been running the gold, is the same way they're intending to run the oil. And we're saying, stop. Togasima, let us first align it. I mean, we are still a young population. Museven is dying out soon. That oil is going to benefit Uganda and not benefit Museven. And we were advised by Dr. Vesije more than three years ago that if that oil falls in the hands of Museveni, we are finished. Mm -hmm. And we said, okay, mm -hmm. I mean, we can't stop him in Uganda, but at least we know the source, so we stop him from there. Okay. Yeah.